Hello and welcome to another Nuclear Craft Spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at the fission reactor, um, everything through the fission reactor, how to build the structure, what to do inside the structure, how to generate as much energy as you can from your fuels. Um, first of all, I just want to say that last time we looked at the basic machines, that was in the last spotlight. Um, all of the bugs, I think all of the bugs that cropped up in that video, such as the missing recipes in some of these machines and the machine interface not working correctly, those bugs have now been fixed. Um, in the latest version. Um, there is a couple of bugs, uh, minor bugs, not game-breaking bugs, um, with the fission reactor, which I'll go through um, as we go through this video. Um, but I basically just want to jump straight in and we want to talk about how to build a fission reactor. Um, it's actually pretty simple, um, the basics, but it starts to get a little bit more complicated. So we'll start with the basics and see where it takes us. So first of all, um, we want to actually just build our fission structure. Now, um, a fission structure just consists of a skeleton of reactor casing that um, envelops a, um, an, a hollow cuboid uh, such as this. I mean, obviously this isn't finished, but if I was to finish this off, um, let's just build a new one over here just to do some testing. I'm going to build a 3x2x2 three by two by two reactor. The side length can be anything uh, you want, um, well, anywhere between the minimum and maximum. Um, so you can see in here, if we go into our options, into our configs, and we look up nuclear craft, we have some config options in here. Um, so fission configs, you can see We've got our minimum length of 1 as the default, maximum length of 24 as the default. You can obviously change this as much as you want. Um, there are other options in there that you can tweak with, but I'm just going to use all the default numbers. Um, so don't worry about this um, unless you know what you're doing and you want to change how powerful the fuels are. Or um, oh, well, This is actually one that's perhaps a little bit important. If your server is lagging, um, you find it's lagging when you have a lot of fission reactors in the world, um, put this number up perhaps and this will slow down the rate at which the fission controller checks for the reactor structure um, because obviously the, the controller has to know where the reactor is and this the default is to check every two seconds um, but obviously you can put this number up um, this is just the number of ticks per check um, so that's that's something to look at if your server is lagging due to um, fission reactors um, other than that uh, I would pretty much leave everything as it is, unless you really want to. You're making a mod pack or something. Um, let's get on with building this thing. So um, I'm going to build a, just a very small reactor. You can build, as I say, any size, any cuboid size. Um, but I'm going to build a 3x2x2. By two by two. So you just, as you can see, build out a skeleton that contains a cuboid. Such as, oh, I accidentally put in there. Don't worry about that. There we are. So that should do. Now you want to make sure that there are no um, reactor casing inside the hollow bit of the uh, of the structure, and you want to make sure that you've got no reactor casing on the edges of the structure either, because the um, the structure won't be re uh, read properly. So once you've got this very basic um, sort of skeleton of your reactor, you place down your fission reactor facing into the hollow area. As long as the as long as this face is you know into the structure anywhere on this anywhere on this um, anywhere on this four by four area in this plane so the reactor can be placed here or maybe down here or here or or up or there or up there or there or whatever it can be placed anywhere in this plane as long as it's facing towards the reactor on this front side it will work um, so I'm going to just place it down here um, and we can see that we've got a 3x2x2 three by two by two fission reactor so it's read the structure. Okay first of all what you want to do is you want to get some fuel. Um, well that's not necessarily the first thing you have to do but I'm gonna, it's going to be the first thing I do. Um, I'm just going to get two here so we can just look at something. Um, every fuel in the game um, has stats so you can see here when we hover over these fuels I think there's I think there's maybe 60 fuels in the game quite a lot of fuels so there's a lot of logistics that goes into uh, optimizing the way you deal with your um, your fuels. Um, but as you can see, there's a base process time, um, a base power, and a base heat gen for each of these fuels. And I'm going to explain what those mean in a second. Um, so let's. I'm going to use uh, LeU233 oxide. It's pretty standard fuel. Uh, I'm going to put that in my uh, in my controller, and you can see straight away that it reads that this is an LeU233 oxide fuel. Um, I need to get a lever as well, which is to turn the reactor on and off. But you can see that even if I turn on this reactor, nothing happens. No, no RF is generated at all. There's, there's nothing going on. Um, that's because um, that we've got no cells in the reactor. There's nothing in the reactor for the for the fuel to be burnt in or, or um, used up in. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, just to start off, something basic, is I'm going to put a single cell in there. So let's see what this does. Um, if we put a single cell in, in the reactor, we'll see that we're now generating 200 on our, our per tick and 75 Kelvin per tick, which is exactly the numbers uh, on this um, tooltip here. And that's because basically what the base power says uh, and the base heat generation says is how much one cell of this fuel will generate. So it's pretty simple. Um, and there we are. If we put a second cell in, then those numbers will double. So now you can see that we're generating 403 RF per tick. There's a lot of slow to update there. Never mind. Uh, 403 RF per tick and 150 um, Kelvin per tick. And that's just double these numbers down here. Pretty simple. Um, so you can just keep adding um, cells like that. Uh, obviously, you're going to start generating more and more um, heat, but we're going to have to deal with that. But first of all, I just want to guide you through how the cells work. Um, now, if you put cells next to each other, you'll see something slightly different happen. So when we put them um, next to each, uh, away from each other, not directly touching or adjacent to each other, we saw that um, the numbers simply doubled. But if we put them next to each other like this, you'll see now that something slightly different happens. You'll see that we get 806 RF per tick, which is four times the base value down here. And we'll get 450 Kelvin per tick, which is six times the number down here. So what is going on? Well, basically, if you put reactor cells next to each other, they'll sort of um, feed off each other, feed off each other's um, radiation, neutron radiation. And that basically means that um, you're going to have more efficient um, fuel, fuel uh, and power generation. Um, so you can see the efficiency has now gone up to 200% because each of these cells is generating twice as much power. Um, so that's what the efficiency sort of tracks. It tracks the average sort of um, the average uh, multiplier on each of the cells. Um, if we put, uh, for example, let's just show how the efficiency works. So if we were to put another reactor cell here, um, so now you can see that this reactor cell is next to three, um, of, uh, sorry, next to two other reactor cells, and th these two reactor cells are next to next to one each. Um, so the efficiency of each of these cells was 2, the efficiency of this cell is 3, and so we'll expect first of all that the power is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times as much as the base, and we'd also expect the efficiency to be um, 2 thirds influenced by these two, and 1 third influenced by this. So we should expect a 233% efficiency, and 7 times the power. So there we are, 233% efficiency, and the power um, I'm sure if you did, yes, that looks about right. 200 is roughly seven times by times by seven is roughly that. So that looks like it's working. So yeah, the power is multiplied by seven and the efficiency is higher. Um, so basically, uh, t to calculate the amount of power you're going to generate in your reactor, for each and every cell in the reactor, you multiply by the amount of, um, you multiply uh, the base power of the fuel by the efficiency of the cell. So the efficiency of this cell is three, the efficiency of these cells are two, and then you just add them all together. So in this case, it's two plus two plus three, which is seven, times the base, which is about 1,400. So that's how you do the, um, the heat. Uh, sorry, that's how you do the power. Now to do the heat is a little bit more difficult. So there's a little bit more uh, mathematics involved, but it's pretty simple. It's actually, um, if you really wanna know, it's actually uh, identical to the industrial craft system, um, which is used in their reactors. Um, and the reason I use it as well is because I really do feel this is the best. It's, it is literally the best way of doing it because otherwise your rea reactors become too too um, too easy to uh, too easy to optimize. Um, it's nice to have a little bit more heat generated as you increase the efficiency of your reactor. Um, so the way that, that that heat is generated is a bit different. So instead of it simply being a linear system where the um, for every cell that's added you go from one times the power, two times the power, three times the power, four times the power, five times the power. Um, you go 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, um, which are the triangle numbers. Um, so you can just go and look up the triangle numbers. Um, it's basically uh, a, a, a quadratic sequence. Um, so it's not a linear sequence uh, like it was before, but this, is, this means that for every extra cell that's touching the, this cell here, um, it's going to ge generate even more heat at a, at a quadratic rate. Um, so Remember, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28. So this cell is next to one other cell. So this is going to ge generate three times. And the same for this one. So this is going to generate six times the heat. You can see here that six times 75 is 450. There we are. So 450. That works. 
Um, so we're generating twice as much power, but for six times the amount of heat. So you've got a oh, sorry, three to, uh, one and a half times the amount of heat actually technically, isn't it? So yeah, you've got to take that into no, it is three times heat. Sorry, it is three times heat. Twice as much power for three times the heat. Um, so you've got to take this into account when you when you want to when you want to plan out your cooling of the reactor because the more efficient you want to make your reactor, the more heat you're going to have to deal with, and that's something you've got to have to balance when you're building. Um, so let's do a slightly more complicated one. Um, let's do this this example again. Um, here we've got um, a heat generator of uh, heat generator multiplier of three. Here we've got a heat generator multiplier of three. Here we've got one since it's touching two. We've got a heat generator multiplier of six. So it's three plus three plus six, which is twelve. So we'd expect to generate twelve times the amount of heat. And if we do the math here, twelve times seventy-five is nine hundred. There's nine hundred. And there we are, 900 um, Kelvin per tick. So there we are. That's pretty pretty simple once you know the system. Um, so there we are. That's the basics of, of reactor cells. Now, another way to generate more power in your reactor is to use graphite blocks. Graphite blocks um, work pretty simply, actually. Um, for every graphite block that is adjacent to a reactor cell, at least one reactor cell, doesn't matter how many more, um, the graphite block will just... Um, count the number of reactor cells in the structure it doesn't matter what efficiency each cell has that's important and it will multiply the number of cells in the reactor by the base power of the fuel so in this case that's two times the base fuel um, which is um, 403 and it will generate an extra eighth of that number so an eighth of 403 so you take the base power of the fuel multiply by the number of cells in the structure, regardless of their efficiency, multiply that by one eighth, and that's how much extra power each graphite block is going to generate. So in this case, um, 403 eighth of that is about 50. So we'd expect to generate um, 806 plus about 50. And there we go, we get 856 RF per tick. And you can see because the number of cells hasn't changed um, and we're generating more power, the efficiency is even higher now, it's at 212. So there we go. That's pretty simple. That's the heat. Um, oh sorry, that's the power. I've made that mistake again. Now to calculate the extra heat that you're generating for each block of graphite, um, the calculator is pretty similar. Um, this time you um, take the same number again, number of reactor cells, multiplied by the power. Remember, we're generating, we're, we're calculating the extra heat here, but you have to you take the power. So the amount of heat generated by a graphite block is related to the base power of the fuel, not the base heat. That's important. Um, so we take 2 times 201, which is 400. But this time we multiply by 1 16th instead of 1 8th. So 1 16th of 400 is roughly 25. Um, before, remember, we were generating 450 um, heat per tick. And you can see with an extra 25, we should be getting about 475. And we do get 475. So there we are. That's working. So recap, graphite block, take the number of cells, regardless of their efficiency, multiply by the base power. And to get the extra power, you multiply by 1 8th. And to get the extra heat, you multiply by 1 16th. So that is, graphite blocks are actually a very good way of increasing the efficiency of your reactor without... Um, you know, without without generating too much more heat. So they're, they're very, very highly recommended. Um, one thing to point out, just in case you're wondering, is that if you add a second graphite block, it won't take the other graphite block into account. Each of the, cal e each of the calculations are done separately. So if you get two graphite blocks in there, then each of them generate the exact same amount of extra heat and power. So we should now get, um, for example, 500 um, heat per tick and um, an extra roughly 50 RF per tick. So you know, they just they just add linearly. They don't they don't sort of exponentially increase the power, um, as some people might expect. Um, so there we go. That's graphite. So graphite's a good way of increasing the efficiency of reactor, um, sort of slightly uh, more microscopically and without raising the heat too bad. And cells are ways of really dramatically increasing the efficiency. But you are gonna have to account for some uh, a lot of extra generated heat. Um, one last thing that um, I added. Um, towards the end of the 1.7.10 days. If you have a graphite block, um, this only works for one graphite block. You can't have you can't have um, them separated by two graphite blocks. It has to be at max one graphite block. If you have a graphite block between um, two reactor cells, then this will count as the cells being adjacent. Um, so this counts as if 
this is adjacent to this one. So the efficiency of this cell is two, so is this one. So you're going to generate four times the amount of um, you're going to generate four times the amount of power, six times the amount of heat plus the extra heat from the graphite block. So you can see here that we're going to get the same stats as we did before. We're going to get a 212% efficiency, 475 um, heat per tick and 856 RF per tick. So this is a good way of sort of um, th there's many good re reasons for having your um, re uh, reactor design like this. There are other good reasons to have them like this and that depends on the coolers that we're going to use. So I'll, I'll go into the coolers now. So I think it might be a good idea to move into this larger reactor to show exactly how all the coolers function. Um, but first of all, I'm going to finish it, uh, just you know, finish it off. So let's just finish this structure off. You'll notice that there's some reactor ports here. Don't worry about them. We'll get to them in a second. So let's just finish this structure uh, structure off, and let's put the um, fission controller here. So you can see here we've got a um, quite a large. Is there something missing somewhere? Something missed spot yes I have so here we got a 7x3x5 by by fission reactor quite a big one actually um, so let's go inside uh, one thing I should mention actually is you can just put other blocks in here as long as they're not reactor casing any block can go in here so you know gold you know let's, let's, as an example and if it's a bit dark in here you can put some torches um, you know I just want to show that this this is absolutely fine um, you see that it just still reads the structure perfectly um, so don't worry about having other blocks in here or torches if it's a bit dark. Um, so I'm gonna, I am gonna put some torches in here because it is a bit dark. Um, we're gonna go into the coolers now. There's a lot of coolers in this in this mod. Um, water cooler, redstone cooler, quartz cooler, gold cooler, glowstone cooler, lapis cooler, diamond cooler, liquid helium cooler, and from th if you have a thermal foundation installed, there's the indirium cooler and the cryothium cooler. Um, all of these coolers have different effects and different amounts of cooling. Um, so let's get into that right now. Um, I'm actually going to quickly restart this server because the server um, seems to have the old um, cooling values on. So I'll be right back in a second. There we are. Um, just one word of warning. If you, um, for some reason, restart your server and then change the configs of the server and then log back in again, for some reason the client sort of tries to remember the old configs from the server um, and sort of it doesn't quite work properly. Um, so that's just one word of warning. I don't think I can do anything about that. That just seems to be something to do with Minecraft. Um, so you have to restart your client as well for it to sort of update the server configs correctly. I'm not even exactly sure why the client remembers this, the old server configs, but for some reason it does. It's once I restarted my client, these numbers um, became correct. But just just a, just a word of warning on that if you ever do that um, and you're getting the wrong config still. Just try and restart your client. Uh, but anyway, we've got all these numbers here. As you can see, um, all of these uh, coolers have cooling rates but they also have this um, special sort of um, requirement as well for them to actually do anything. If you fail to meet the requirement for any of these coolers, unlike the old version of Nuclear Craft where they basically just generate, uh, where they basically just cool for less, um, these coolers literally will do nothing um, unless you um, unless you uh, settle the requirement uh, in the tooltip here. Um, so water coolers are pretty bad, um, and then they get better as they become more expensive, ending up with the really expensive ones like liquid helium, indirium, and cryothium. And diamond's pretty good as well, I guess. Um, but let's uh, go through them all, uh, one by one, just to show exactly how they work. Um, first of all, I'm just going to uh, go out of here, and um, I want to just see, because I'm a bit curious, actually. I want to I just see exactly whether I can just read this off straight from here. I can. Fantastic. So, um, first of all, the water cooler, as you just saw there. Um, it cools for 20 heat per tick. Um, maybe I should change that to Kelvin per tick. I've just realized that's a bit of a typo, isn't it? Um, I must at uh, You must touch at least one reactor casing. So it just has to be anywhere on the edge of the casing. So it could be there, 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 wherever. As long as it's just touching uh, the, the wall, um, then it will work. So if we close this up, and you'll see minus 20 Kelvin per tick. Pretty simple. That is the water cooler works pretty simply. Um, you can sort of put it out the way of your uh, cells. So if you've got some sort of cell structure over there, you can just put some water coolers. It doesn't matter about the cells. Um, it just works like that. Um, next is the redstone cooler. It must touch at least one reactor cell. Um, so let's, um, I mean, uh, hopefully at this point you can just trust um, actually that the this is this works properly. Um, I'm not going to keep going back to the controller anymore to show you um, because it just becomes a bit tedious. Um, it probably already is. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to show you exactly how they actually work, how you need to place them. Um, 
this needs to just touch the cell. So as long as the cooler is anywhere near the cell, adjacent, um, this thing will cool for 80 heat per tick. So again, very simple. Um, quartz cooler. This must touch at least one active graphite block. Now, as you can see, there's a special one that active. Um, if you just put a graphite block in the in the in the structure, which doesn't do anything. Uh, by the way, if a graphite block isn't next to a cell, if it's just on its own, it literally will do nothing. So there's no point of doing that. Um, if you put a quartz cooler next to one of these um, graphite blocks, it won't do anything. The graphite block has to be active, i.e. it has to be um, next to a reactor cell. Only now will the quartz cooler actually do anything. So you need to make sure that, that the graphite block is not just one that's just hanging around on its own. Um, there's, you can't you know, cheat out of it by just putting loads of graphite blocks, loads of graphite blocks around and just putting quartz coolers everywhere. That won't work anymore. Um, so the quartz cooler has to be next to a graphite block which is in itself next to a reactor cell. And then the quartz will generate, um, eight, uh, will cool for 80 heat per tick. Uh, next is gold. This much t mist must touch at least one water cooler and one redstone cooler. So, um, so the redstone cooler is here. Let's just say it's there for whatever reason. The water cooler is is is, uh, is there, and the gold cooler will only work if it's next to each of these, like that. So there we are. Um, then it will then it will cool for 120 heat per tick, which is pretty good actually. So that's the gold cooler. Uh, next is the glowstone cooler. Much t must touch at least two active graphite blocks. So again, uh, these graphite blocks must be next to cells themselves. And then the glowstone cooler in there will generate uh, will cool for 120 heat per tick. Pretty good. Uh, lapis must touch at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing. Um, so, for example, uh, it must touch the casing there and the cell which is there, or perhaps something more like uh, this would work. That would that would cool as well for 100 heat per tick. Diamond cooler needs to be sandwiched by water coolers. There's a bit of confusion about this in GitHub. Um, sandwiched. Oh, I've been invited to a game on Steam. I'll uh, I'll check that in a second. Um, sandwich means that it has to be um, within four um, four of these coolers in the same plane. That's what sandwich means. If I ever add, add anything new that says sandwiched, it means this has to be in th in the same plane as and between four of whatever block it happens to be. It has to be sandwiched by water coolers, and if it is, um, then it will um, cool down for um, 120 heat per tick. Um, so something like that, that would work. There we are, that's diamond. Uh, then we move on to liquid helium. Um, liquid helium coolers, um, all of these coolers by the way can be just crafted pretty easily. Um, the only exception to that is liquid helium. The way you get liquid helium in case you missed the last episode is to go over to a um, infuser here and infuse an empty, um, infuse an empty cooler with liquid helium. That's how you make these helium cells. Helium cooler, sorry. Um, so, helium. Let's get back in here. This must touch must touch at least one quartz and one reactor casing. So uh, it must do something like this, for example. So that would work, or this, or maybe um, maybe this, something like that. So they're actually very useful, and that's because um, quartz usually sort of hangs around on the edge of a bunch of. Um, cells and graphite and so if you put this next to um, reasonably near to a reactor casing and you can just slip a liquid helium cooler on the edge there and you get an extra 120 heat per tick that's actually a really useful one um, so it doesn't cool as much as 140 uh, as these ones do but it's actually much more useful y you'll find y yourself using it a lot more um, so that's the uh, helium liquid helium finally we've got the enderium and the cryothium the cryothium must touch at least two reactor cells um, so either, you know, something like this or like this and it will um, cool down 140 heat per tick. And then finally the enderium, which is actually pretty easy to use. Um, it must touch three reactor casings, i.e. it must be in the corners. Anywhere in these corners and you'll get a bonus um, cooling of 140 heat per tick. Um, so that's actually really useful. Again, that's, that's actually that's probably easier than the liquid helium to figure out because it just, you know, you can just put this in all your corners and you suddenly get a bunch of cooling going on, uh, which is really nice. Um, so that's the Endearing cooler. And that's pretty much all the coolers. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the um, internals of the reactor goes. You've got your coolers and you've got your graphite and your cells. And it's all the whole point of fission reactors, similar, similar to, you know, big reactors 
and um, I think it's called Extreme Reactors now, and Industrial Craft, and those sort of mods. It's all about how you use the coolers and the cells and the graphite to cr construct the best, most efficient system um, for generating power. And this can be really difficult in nuclear craft, right? Because you've got, like, unlike big reactors and in industrial craft, you've got, like, 60 different fuels to deal with. So you're going to have to have different designs for all your different fuels. And that's what I like. I like having this that versatility, um, that variation. Um, there's one final thing uh, to look at, which is these uh, fission reactor ports. Um, these, this is one of the bugs that's currently in the mod. It's a very easy fix. I'll be able to fix it in a couple of days when I'm back um, at a place where I can fix it. Um, basically, this acts as a way to get um, items and power out of the reactor. So this is can also be used to get power out of the reactor. Um, but currently, um, the structure isn't being searched correctly, and the only place where um, the structure is being searched currently in the mod is um, on these on these sort of corner columns, on these edge columns. So here, down here, down here, and down here. And that's just because of a faulty bit of code that I added that doesn't work properly. Um, I promise you in the next update um, I'll fix that and then it will work properly. But just to demonstrate how it does work, I will put the fission controller on the corner like this. And what you can do is you can have these um, fission uh, ports. These do have a directionality, by the way, as you can see. There's this side that looks a little bit different to the others, and you need to make sure that this side is facing into the structure like this. And you can't, um, these uh, blocks won't face downwards or upwards, so they have to be on the on the side like this. And they have to be on the on the side face. They can't be on the top or the bottom. And you can't do this either because they won't search correctly. They have to be, they literally have to be on the side one like that. Um, but uh, these can be used to pull and push items in and out of the, uh, out and in of the, uh, uh, of the controller. So if we put the fuel rod in here, you'll see, hopefully, if it works, oh, I need to turn the lever on properly. Uh, you'll see that that gets pulled in and put into the controller over here. There it is. It's It's got it. Um, if we do generate a little bit of power, let's just do that quickly, just to, just to demonstrate how this can also be used to pull out. Um, let's go to this, actually. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pos pos possibly something I need to mention. Um, it, Nuclear Craft has IC2 integration, so you can use it to generate IC2 power, but it's at a rate of 1 RF, uh, sorry, 16 RF for every 1 EU. So it's a much smaller rate than the standard. And that's because I feel that it's in in uh, IC2, it's actually much more difficult to um, generate electricity. Um, so the um, the rate of, pow of power generation um, transforming is a lot lower. So we've got a bit of power in there now. Um, if we want to pull the power out of the controller, that's fine. But if we want to pull it out of a port, we can do that as well. Uh, so let's just get a capacitor. It's one of these standard capacitor banks. And we can just get one of them, get a conduit. And we can see that that's filling up. That's pulling it straight out of the uh, of the controller. So there we are. That's it's pretty simple. So that's how it's meant to work. Obviously, at the moment, it doesn't work quite properly, but that is basically what the port's meant to do. You can put fluids in as well, because eventually um, we're going to have steam fission reactors. Um, which means you can pull steam out of these fission ports and push water into them. Uh, so that's going to be very cool. Um, the final thing that uh, I should mention is that the buffer block, which is here, can be used on the um, on the structure as well. It, these can, unlike the um, port, be used on the top. Um, these can be used in the structure, and you can see it works perfectly fine. Um, this can be used to get... Uh, liquids and things on the inside of this structure. So let's just demonstrate that quickly actually because it might be interesting to demonstrate this. So let's get some fluid conduits from our favorite mod, uh, NUIO. Uh, so let's do that and let's uh, let's have a really basic sort of tank or something on the top here just to demonstrate it. So let's get a tank. Boom and boom. Let's get some water in here or something. Let's um, let's close up the structure and turn this to always active. You'll see that first of all, this will go into the buffer. That's fed into the buffer, and then down here we can pull out into the structure. So now we've got water on the inside of the structure. 
Um, now, this is something that I accidentally thought of by chance, um, but it's I think it's going to be a really cool feature. Basically, there's g we're I'm going to add active coolers. So unlike these passive coolers that just sit there and sort of work um, on their own, um, I'm thinking that what I'm going to add is um, coolers which need to be supplied with energy or fluid or items. And you can use the buffer to... Um, as a, as a way to get fluids and items and power onto the inside of the structure. And then on the inside of the reactor, you can then have things like pipes and these conduits and cables and things going everywhere. And it, then it will actually look really cool, I think. So you'll have all these coolers everywhere. You'll have these cells with the fuel in them, with graphite and stuff. And you'll maybe have some passive coolers. And then on the inside, you'll have some pipes and then some active coolers being powered by by energy or being um, cooled down by water, which are more effective. So I think this could be really cool. Um, Perhaps, you know, I, I, this is only a very um, sort of new idea. So maybe in the comments, like, su suggest some stuff if you have some cool ideas about how to how to add some new features, you know, some how to how to make the active coolers work. But I think that could be a really cool idea. Um, obviously, the most classic example would be uh, a cooler which gets fed by water and works. Um, but stuff like that, I think, could be awesome and be a way of uh, making fission reactors a little bit more complicated and uh, fun to play with. Um, but I think that's pretty much everything for the Trigion Reactor. The final bug I will tell you about um, that someone found out the other day, well done for finding it actually, because you know it takes um, a bit of uh, time. I should have found it really, it's my fault that it got out there without um, being checked. If this reactor does overheat, um, first of all I will tell you about what happens, what should happen if the reactor overheats. Um, in the old version of nuclear power, basically the whole reactor blew up. I don't want to have that anymore, I want to have a slightly more subtle but cool system with some radiation involved. Um, and I've got a very, very ambitious plan for that. Um, but at the moment, what happens is the fission controller basically just turns to lava and disappears. That's what should happen. Um, but what's happening in the moment in the code is that I'm turning the block to lava first, and then some properties of the con controller are being looked for, and obviously they aren't there because it's been turned to lava, so it's crashing the game. Um, so what's meant to happen is meant to turn the lava, and that's about it. Um, but at the moment, that's a bit broken. So at the moment, don't try and overheat your reactor. Don't try and do it anyway. But if you do and it crashes, well, it's your fault for now. Uh, I, I need to fix that. Um, another bug that is fixed is this this flickering. This is happening because um, the port is um, basically, you know, th this port is taking and uh, you know, power is being flicked between the port and the um, capacitor bank here. Um, that is being fixed as well, um, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we're done here. So coolers, um, graphite, cells, uh, different fuels, Active coolers coming next, fission ports, also steam reactors coming next with um, molten fluid salt um, fuels, which are going to be awesome. To th that's, that's, that's an idea I got given by, by, by someone, I should really remember their name, on the Feed the Beast forums. Um, that was a really cool idea, so thank you so much for giving me that, that suggestion. That's just an example of how sometimes these suggestions that you guys give me um, can be implemented. They're going to be awesome. So just keep giving, giving them to me because I will gladly take them and run with them. Um, and yeah thank you for watching next episode we're going to have a look at fusion um nuclear fusion in 2.2d has for the most part been fixed there is still one not really uh, well it is a bug but it's not it's nowhere it's it doesn't affect the gameplay at all really it's just a uh, the fact that the sounds don't play properly when you start up the reactor for the first time or something like that it's, it's not very important but we'll go on to fusion fusion is actually a lot more simple than fission so this that video will probably be quite short um or shorter compared to this one if you do still have any questions about fission, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments or on the forums. Um, we're on the Feed the Beast forums, uh, on the Minecraft forums, and on, obviously, CurseForge, where the mod can be downloaded. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say. So I will see you next time, and peace.